Listen, Curly. I've told you a half a dozen times you can't come in this studio. Are you deaf, too? But I want... I know, I know. You won a beauty contest in your hometown, and Mother thinks you've got Scarbo eyes, Billy Dove face, and Clara Bow Lane. Say, so you're new in Hollywood, aren't you? No, sir. I've been here nearly a week. That's what I thought. You don't look real hungry yet. Now, listen, little girl. You haven't got a chance. Standing in line with thousands ahead of you. And most of them hungry, too. Now take my advice. Go on back home. Oh, how'd it go today? Oh, well, I'm going to get a part in the next picture. Oh, in the lighted lamp? Yeah, I'm going to play the wick. <laughs> uh, good night, fellas. By the tears, fair one. I want to go home. Where do you live? Omaha. Omaha? And you're crying to go back there? Gee, you must be hard up. You got a place to flop? To sleep? I see. Thrown out, huh? Well, you can sleep with a girlfriend and me. But you'll have to park on a sofa. Come on. Can I speak to Rita, please? We, oui. Mademoiselle Flynn? Who's calling, please? This is Bill O'Reilly, speaking from the studio. Un moment, so we'll play. Hello, Bill. What do you want? What's the idea of giving me this French maid business? Well, how'd I know it was you? Now listen, Rita. Why don't you take this job? It pays $25 a day, and it may run a week. I told you, Bill, my salary is 50 bucks a day. But, Rita, they won't pay it. You know they're trying to cut down expenses. Oh, yeah? Then let them fire some of the relatives. But, Rita, you know they're not so sure of your voice. Well, you can hear me now, can't you? Yeah, I can hear you all right, even without the telephone. Wait a minute, Bill. I think Mr. Zigfeld is calling. Come in. Uh-oh, a menace. I tell you, my salary is $50 a day. Take it or leave it. The nerve of some people. Can you imagine me working for $25 a day? I can't imagine you working at all. Says I have to learn to talk for talking pictures. I suppose next I'll have to learn to flush for Technicolor. If I were you, I wouldn't be so independent, young lady. And why not? Say, there's a dozen companies looking for me. Yes, there were three of them here today. Yes? Yes. The gas, light, and telephone companies. Oh. And here's a little item you shouldn't overlook. Oh, yes. It's the red, isn't it? I think I've been very lenient with you girls. Oh, yes, you have, you old darling. But, uh... I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, you see, uh, Phyllis will be home soon, and Phyllis always brings something with her. You! You! I'll take this on account. On account of what? On account of your being such a sap. Haven't I told you never to bring home ten dollars in one bill? Oh, I'm sorry. Rita, this is Leota. She's going to live here with us until she gets a job in pictures. I hope we live here that long. Would you care to dress for dinner? You know, we dine at seven. Why, I would like to tidy up a bit. The bathroom's on the right. I'll stew up some fish. Come on, kids. Cheer up. The world always sounds different after you get your ears torn. Little mother had to bring home another orphan, huh? Well, I couldn't let her sleep on the street, could I? No, I suppose not. What 
What'll I do with these stockings in the basin? Wash them. Sam. Say, Phyllis. I saw Nancy Carroll in a swell picture this afternoon. Gee, I think she's marvelous, don't you? Oh, what's she got that I haven't got? A five-year contract, that's all. Just the break. Yeah. Say, speaking of break, how are we going to divide two eggs between three people? All make applesauce. Come in. Oh, good evening. I was just wondering where I could borrow a couple of eggs. <laughs> Well, if you find out, let us know, will you? Yeah, and we could use a hunk of ham, too. Well, I didn't come here to be insulted. Hey, don't get sore till you bring back that cup of sugar you borrowed. Fresh. Phyllis, where are the towels? Where's our towels? Oh, I took it to the studio. I saw Lou Cody in the studio today. Gee, I think he's grand. Why? Oh, he's so mysterious. No man's mysterious. They're like automobiles. Millions of them. They all work the same way. Someday I'm going to get an extension put on this phone. Better get an extension on the bill first. The salary is still 50 bucks a day. Never mind the 50 bucks. How about having a little dinner with me? Sorry, Bill, but I'm all dressed for a dinner party. Going to the Momot with Buster Keaton. I'll be seeing you. Bye. Someday that guy's going to drive me crazy. That's no drive. It's only a short cut. Oh, why don't you be nice to Bill? Listen, Mary, there's only one way to hold a man. Look hot and keep cool. Well, here I am. I was afraid of that. Uh-oh, no cream. Wait a minute. And when I do, you turn it down. I want you to make good, honey. Because you know I love... Oh, now, Bill. Do we have to go through all that again? This part was made for you. You play a sweet, simple, innocent little country girl. Bill, you know I don't play character parts. 
But you could play this part. You've been in the country, haven't you? Yeah. I had a long walk in the country once. Gee, he was a fresh mug. It was a swell car, though. Oh, Rita, why don't you be serious? Listen, you want a real country girl? Get a load of Omaha over there. Hello, fellas. Oh, hello, Bill. Oh, uh, meet Miss, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Beverly Wiltshire. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sure. Have you ever had any experience, Miss Wiltshire? Oh, yes. I acted in social back home. Well, how did you get to Hollywood? I won a beauty contest. And they gave me a ticket. Say, they're having a beauty contest in Hollywood right now. Yeah, and the winner gets a ticket back home. Can you sing? A little. Try this, will you? This is the song that goes with the pot. It's a peach. <laughs> on a small country town where the heroine lives with her widowed mother. You see, she hasn't any father. That's great. All new stuff. Nevertheless, there is a mortgage on their home which is about to be foreclosed unless the girl marries the rich old banker who holds the mortgage. Phyllis, throw him out. He's breaking my heart. However, the girl is in love with Tom, the son of the village blacksmith, who has gone to the big city to try and borrow the money. Well, they wait and wait and wait, but still he doesn't return. Something must have happened. No doubt. Then, in final desperation, the girl decides to marry the rich old banker in order to save the home. Then guess what happens? The blacksmith's son returns in time to save the Oh, and sweetheart. Oh, you, you know the story. Oh, who doesn't? Yeah, but we've got a new treatment. What do you say? Let's rehearse the big scene. And Miss Wiltshire, if you're okay, I'll see that you get a screen test for the part. Rita, you play the rich old banker. Great. I'd love to play a banker. And Phyllis? You play the part of the mother. I suppose I'll have to put on a little age. Now you play the sweet little country maiden, and I play Tom, the blacksmith's son. This is the day the rich old banker calls. He will demand either the money or the daughter's hand in marriage. It is a tense moment in the lives of these simple, honest, calm folk. As the scene opens, you're playing softly in your mother's arms. Are you ready, mother? All set. Why well, sit right here and make yourself comfortable? How about you, villain? Okay.
All right, then. Let's go. It's two o'clock, and I want my money. All right, then. It's three o'clock, and I want my money or your daughter's hand in marriage. But, Mr. Jones, I don't love you. Please understand. I could never love you. I could be a wife to you in name only. Why must you do this thing? Well, just as you are, Tom Wilson, he can't fail us. Don't you see the injustice of it all? I love him. I love him. <laughs> Give me the mortgage. Go and never darken the threshold of this door again. My home, my darling, my money, my rent, my wages. This is a deal of night for Hollywood folks. Never in the history of the cinnamon capital has such an aggregation of film luminaries turned out for what it should be here. I wish you could see Hollywood Boulevard as streams of cars gleam in the light of a thousand than art, and 50,000 spectators settle an army of police for a glimpse of their stream favorites. They're falling in the theater by hundreds now, folks, celebrities whose names and faces are known throughout the world. Every one of the important to here tonight to pay tribute to the genius and histrionic artistry of film and newest celluloid luminary. We're all set now, waiting for the arrival of that new little star, Miss Beverly Wilshire. Sensation of Hollywood, who, but three short months ago, was an unknown aspirant for film fame. Her unusual personality and intellect have brought her to the top of her profession. She truly merits the great reception of her tonight. Just a moment, please. Here she is now, that clever and intelligent little star, Miss Beverly Wilshire. Please stand by. Hi. Good evening, Miss Wilshire. Uh, good evening. Uh, just a moment, please. Would you please say something to your radio audience? Shall I? Sure. Go ahead. Miss Wilshire will now give you her address. 593 Old Franklin Avenue, Hollywood, California. Oh. Uh, there will be a brief pause for station announcements, please. <coughs> She's a good kid. I'm glad she got a break. Yeah, we got a break, too. Now we can have an egg of beef. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay. Wait a minute. What's the matter, kid? Are you hungry? No. No. Where are you from? Oh, ma. Come on. 